If you're an e-commerce brand that is getting less than 10% open rates on their emails or an agency that's getting less than 50% open rates on your outbound cold prospecting emails, then watch this video to make sure that you're not actually landing in spam. I'll be walking you through the protocols needed to prevent you from landing in the spam folder in the first place and also some tactics you can do to actually get yourself out of the spam folder. Let's jump into a screen share and I'll show you exactly how this is done. So this is all of the uh, things that you need to know when it comes to having a really, really high deliverability rate for your email marketing and your email domain. So there's a few things that could get you into spam in the first place, and it has something to do with what's called your sender reputation, right? So sender reputation essentially is a summation of different kind of like parameters for your specific email domain and IP address. And it kind of breaks down into the following, right? The reputation of the IP address in which you're sending from, your domain reputation, your email engagement rate slash uh, reported as spam rate, and just generally a few uh, email service provider red flags uh, to watch out for. And this all together will contribute to your sender reputation. So how do you actually have a really good sender reputation? Well, first of all, uh, there's a few steps you can take to check if your sender reputation is already good. So the first being, you know, to make sure your IP is not on any blacklists. So how you would do that is you just want to go to uh, mxtoolbox.com and uh, you want to Google IP address uh, to check what your IP address is. Uh, right here so what is my IP address.com once you get your physical IP address you want to copy it and you want to paste it and then you want to hit blacklist checks and then once you check this it's been noticed that this address has been listed on a few IP blacklists so it's not the best one to use so if you want to change your actual IP address I highly recommend you get something called NordVPN so this is a VPN that I personally use and the way you can get around this is by finding a server that has that isn't on any blacklists and using that server every time you choose to send any emails uh, or create any new emails. Next is you want to go to domain reputation. Uh, so this is essentially doing something what's uh, using this thing called uh, Glock apps to do a span test. Uh, just make sure when it comes to your reports, you want to have a, above 80 five percent when it comes to your spam reports i'll show you some of mine so for example this is one that i did in the past i think that was uh, yeah 24th of may you can see my deliverability is really really good with my typical cold emails it's 95 percent uh, i was on some ip blacklist but it's, it's not a big deal uh, just because it's only two once it goes above i'd say like three to five that's where you should be a bit concerned because generally speaking um, you know, it, it's very easy to be blacklisted by some filters because it's very, very strict. Generally speaking, when it comes to deliverability, you just want to make sure your Gmail deliverability is 100% in the inbox. Uh, any other stuff like, for example, like Outlook, I know they're super, super strict with um, the criterias. So I wouldn't worry too much if you get marked as spam for Outlook, uh, but as long as Gmail, Hotmail is all good to go, then um, you're, you're, you're solid basically. Yeah, make sure it's 85% or above, or at least uh, around that, or at least kind of Gmail isn't blocking you. Uh, the easiest way to have Gmail deliver your emails is by buying your domain from Google and using G Suite. This is by far the, the easiest, lowest hanging fruit you can get, right? Next is when it comes to email engagement rate, essentially what this is, is basically a ratio between the inflow of email and the outflow of emails within your inbox. So an easy way to get this uh, inflow high is by signing up to a bunch of newsletters that deliver on a daily basis. And when it comes to that, Obviously, you don't want 10 random newsletters in your inbox every single day. Obviously, you don't want that. So how you would do it is, for example, you would just search the name that you signed up for. So one newsletter that I really like to sign up for is something called Morning Brew. Just sign up for that. Brew. And once you do, if it includes the words Morning Brew, and then you just want to hit create a filter, skip the inbox markers red. 
and obviously it's not very good to send other people's emails to spam if you're using it to warm up so i always mark this as well so yeah just uh, skip the inbox mark as read archive it and then create the filter this way you know you're not going to be pestered by different kind of notifications on your inbox as well as get the benefit of having a higher inflow of emails when it comes to your inbox as well next is there's a tool called warm up inbox that you could actually use uh, this essentially is a I, I guess a network of people wanting to warm up their emails so it's an automated way of sending emails between uh, email accounts and making sure nothing is landed in spam and in case it does it will automatically mark it as not spam uh, between you guys so yeah there's also a few general red flags when it comes to email service providers uh, they use it to evaluate different domains, uh, a few of them being DKIM, SPF, and DMARC. I don't really know what specifically they do, but um, I do know that it's necessary and um, you, know, you know, it's basically some sort of filter, I'm not sure. But yeah, um, I don't think I have a video explaining how to actually verify all three of these, so comment down below if you want like a dedicated tutorial on how to get your DKIM, SPF, and DMARC set up. Uh, just leave a comment and then I'll make that video properly. Other red flags including including like weird keywords in your uh, newsletters, emails or email campaigns. So how you would get past this is by using a tool called um, Email Spam Trigger Words Checker. You literally would copy and paste your content here, scan it and then uh, basically just find synonyms for every word that appears to be spam. So common spam words would be uh, stuff like, oh yeah, you know, I don't know, like Nigerian Prince or get rich quick, something along those lines where it just sounds scammy. So yeah, those are kind of like the spam keywords to watch out for. Next is when it comes to preventing uh, your emails from landing in spam in the first place. Number one, this is basically the protocol that I use within my own agency and for clients as well to make sure that everyone has high sender reputation and doesn't land in spam. Number one being sign up to 10 newsletters, skip the inbox, uh, basically just create the filter for it. Now, if you're an agency and use warm up inbox, you can also get a healthy inflow. But if you're an e-commerce brand, what I recommend you do is sending your emails from a different domain than your main brand support email. And what you want to be doing, so, so what I mean by that is, for example, if your brand is called uh, gram tw grams28.com, instead you could buy a domain called uh, shop shopgrams28.com and send your emails from this domain. The reason being is because most likely what you're doing right now is you're handling all of the customer service inquiries from info at grams.28.com and the last thing you want to be doing is getting this main domain onto a blacklist and not being able to uh, deliver customer service support emails, for example. Now, once you get a separate domain, what you want to be doing is in your email marketing campaigns, you want to always ask people to reply to your email campaigns, maybe even asking questions, giving feedback, literally anything to really get your, your inflow up for that inbox. You can obviously also sign up to the newsletters and also use warm up inbox, etc., etc. The next step is to make sure your SPF, DMARC and DKIM is ver verified. This literally takes five minutes, so you don't have any excuse not to do so. Again, if you want a video on uh, how to actually get all three of these done in one sitting in like five minutes, comment down below and I'll make sure to make a tutorial on this. Now, next is check if your IP is blacklisted, as I said up here. And last tip, uh, but this is only kind of only applicable for agencies, is if you're sending cold outbound, make sure you don't have any spam word, keywords, right? So make sure your email doesn't have like dollar signs uh, scattered everywhere, a bunch of emojis and stuff like that. That's basically just asking to be put in the spam filter. If you already did a Glock test and have a deliverability of less than 85% and are kind of blacklisted on Gmail, then this is the protocol to kind of follow uh, to kind of get your deliverability back up. Worst case, so the last thing you want to be doing, not the last thing, but as in as a last resort, you should be buying a new domain, warming it up for 14 days with the steps above. And then that's how you basically get out of the spam filter. But if you're an e-commerce brand, you just want to make sure that your deliverability is sort of on point, at least with uh, Gmail. And basically Gmail, I think has 60% of the market share when it comes to email, so it's totally fine. 
Uh, but yeah, worst case, buy a new domain, it's not a big deal. Now, if you are landing in spam, but only for some, here's how you actually uh, increase your deliverability, right? Number one, just being reducing the number of emails being sent out daily. This doesn't really apply for e-commerce brands because you're going after um, a entire list of probably like 10 to 100 to 500,000 people. But for agencies, definitely reduce the number of cold outbounds being sent daily or just make a new email domain address. When it comes to e-commerce e brands, what you want to do to kind of mitigate this is just by sending it to a more engaged list. So for example, if your current highly engaged list is uh, people who have opened your emails in the past 90 days, you might want to consider reducing that window down to, let's say, 60 days or 30 days or 45 days, something along those lines. The second way to get off spam is to increase the number of replies uh, to your emails, even if it's artificial, right? So send emails to yourself, ask family and friends to send, your, send you emails. If you have a social following, you could do like an email Q&A, something along those lines, just to get people to actually send you emails. Now, on a side note, if you want to hire replies as an e-commerce brand, I really recommend you start sending a few plain text emails because not only would that be um, lesser in terms of uh, weight, so less megabytes to uh, the email, it would also just encourage people to reply because it's disguised as something that was sent from a real person to a real person, right? So make sure it sounds personal and literally you can ask for any type of feedback or worst case be like, hey, if you give a review, I'll give you a free product or a discount, something along those lines, maybe a even a gift card. And yeah, do these steps and you'll always make sure that your emails are being opened. Now, if you're an e-commerce brand that wants to generate between 20 to 30% of their revenue coming uh, from your email channels, book in a call with me down below and I will see you next time.